This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl with Jace and Lisa. It's so good to see you guys here and with medals around your neck finally. Yeah, it's uh, really cool to be up here in Hamo and uh, we're pretty glad we've got something around our neck, that's for sure. <laughs> it was a tough regatta, I mean, from the get-go. You guys were going into the Olympics as potential favourites. How was the pressure? I mean, it's nothing, you know, everyone says it's nothing like you can even imagine. How was it for you guys? Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, the first two days we actually felt pretty relaxed and pretty in control of it. Um, and then halfway through it got a little bit more tense. We had a few protests that we were involved with and... Um, yeah, it, it was it was pretty obviously stressful, um, uh, but you know the team was doing great and that sort of lifted us lifted us all. And then yeah, we executed a pretty good you know final race. So yeah, it good. looks looks like the Australian sailing team is such a tight knit unit. How much do you rely on each other during those weeks? It was absolutely amazing. Like as you said, it's tight knit. Everyone was there supporting each other, knew what each other needed, and you know we were there with the highs and lows with everyone and cheering cheering everybody on every race. So I think it was really nice to be part of, and it's an amazing team and uh, um, yeah, really special. Yeah, and you guys look really happy, and I know that everyone was so happy to see you come home to Sydney because you didn't have too many family over there. How did it feel when you first saw everyone back here? I mean, I know you had your sister there and your partner, which is amazing. What about you, Lise, when you got home? Um, yeah, it was great. I heard mum screaming from the plane, so uh, good on her. I knew that was going to happen. So, yeah, no, it was really good um, to see them, and mum and dad and my brother. And um, Yeah, it was the Qantas hangar was really special. That was uh, one of the highlights for me in terms of not the sailing. So, yeah, that was, that was really cool and this uh, Hamo parade that was awesome to see all the yachties cheering us on and telling us they were up watching our race at 3am so yeah. yeah really cool. And on that note I've, I've interviewed you guys in Weymouth when you won and we had the gold jersey as a prop. Now we've also got medals as a prop yeah. which I think is pretty cool because we always have props and we've had the check I mean the the boarding pass, like the massive boarding pass, you're going to try and sneak it into your bag. So yeah. I've got a confession, you know, all these yachties, like during the um, Olympic Games, <laughs> when, when you guys were doing well and when you weren't doing so well, I was wearing this lovely shirt <laughs> in cows. Really? What happened? In the pub. Yeah. <laughs> cheering all you guys on. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's my, my surprise for you. Yeah. And, Love um, the green and gold. <laughs> green and gold. Like, I never wear green, hey? <laughs> <laughs> But I worry for you guys because I know so many people were behind you guys from the start. Like, but not only the Olympics, but the entire journey. It's just been awesome to watch. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long seven years. So, yeah. looking forward to having some time off now and and trying some new stuff and then getting back into it for Tokyo. Yeah, and you're you're going to go do some sailing with SoftBank Team Japan. You just pulled a foiling tack off overnight, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I knew they they hit that they hit that one. Um, yeah, 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 in training. So, um, yeah, really stoked for them, and we'll get over there and I'll show them a few things how to make it a bit better. <laughs> the cat expert. What what are you going to do, Lise? I'm going to figure it out. I might try to jump on these extreme sailing boats if they'll give me a ride. And um, I don't know, we'll see what the future holds. But I think I'm going to have to keep working in the gym uh, towards Tokyo. Yeah, how exciting. So you guys do want to go again? Yeah, plans to go again. Yeah. So looking for Tokyo. Yeah, some, people, to Tokyo. some people find it the hardest decision ever and some people are just like, nah, whack. Yeah, we knew before the game started that's what we wanted to do, no matter the result. And uh, the silver medal just highlighted, you know what, we've got to go back for the, for the gold one. For the, gold. for the sweet one. Now, um, I know there's lots of people who hope to get here, but um, I have to say on behalf of everyone I know from Pittwater that worked with you guys from, from the start, um, yeah, there were a lot of sleepless nights and everybody's so proud of you guys. Yeah, we can't wait to go, um, go back to Sydney and actually see them all and give them a big <laughs> hug and just thank everyone uh, from the yeah, Manly Skip Club and RPA. I know that um, they've been our support network since we, were, we started sailing when we were eight. So uh, from all the, to all those guys and thanks so much. Okay, so hardcore, up at 2am and 4am in the morning, even through postponements. Yeah, I mean, we thought it was stressful for us. I mean, it would have been really hard for them. So we really appreciate the support for them coming out so early in the morning. And, and it means a lot to us. So we really appreciate it. And the cool bit is now you get to go have a rest. Yeah, I'm looking forward to sleeping for a week. So that'll be good. A week? Is that all? Um, yeah, to start with anyway. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl at the beautiful Royal Sydney Yacht Squadron. And what a day to be celebrating Zark. It's so exciting, we've got the coat of arms, we've got the Australian... <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> wow. Get behind us Australia, we're ready to rock and roll. And speaking of rock and rolling, how good is this sea breeze? I think we should go sailing this summer. Yeah, we're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl. 
I've caught up with you guys in various places around the world this year, Lisa, Jace, but today might be one of the most exciting ones. <laughs> Yes, yeah, second most exciting. We're looking for a bigger one this year, but this is really awesome. So stoked to be selected early. Takes a bit of pressure off, but doesn't change the ultimate goal. No, definitely not. Jace? Yeah, stoked, obviously. It's been a really busy year and we've worked really hard. Um, so super stoked to you know get to this point. You know, we see it as a stepping stone. We want to win the gold medal at the Rio Olympics, and we're working hard, real hard. And, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, getting over there and giving it a crack. Yeah, you guys have worked hard. Not just this year, you guys have worked hard for a long time with the ultimate dream of, of going to the Olympics, but this is just, you know, another step in the journey, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we've been together sailing for a long time and the youth worlds, and I think it's quite rare for a team like that to stick together, and it's, it's super exciting. We've got a great support network behind us cheering us on, so I wouldn't do it with anyone else. Yeah, obviously it's great, and I think... You know, there might be a cool finish in the story. We won a gold medal at our last um, Youth Worlds in, in Brazil in Brazil. And how excited, guys. I always have props with you. We had the yellow jersey in Weymouth, and now we've got this massive... A ticket from Qantas to the Rio 2016 Olympics, which is very exciting. <laughs> I want to see you carry that around in your handbag. It's not going to fit in my uh, passport wallet, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. And now, one, one more thing. I said to you earlier this year that I think I'm, I'm good luck when I stick that little bow sticker on. Yeah. Any chance you can get me to Rio? Can I maybe just borrow this? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have a few trials, but uh, yeah, you're, you're sitting on the top of the list at the moment. Yeah, position vacant for bow sticker or put her on or up, but congratulations to you too. It's seriously awesome to see you, you get this far, but you know, there's so many people behind you pushing forward to Rio. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, we're really excited. So, all systems go from here. <laughs> all right, Thank that's you. It. I want cuddles. Oh, I'm so proud of you. in Cardiff at the end of the Extreme Sailing Series event here. Jace, what a day. You were on fire in uh, more ways than one. Yeah, it was pretty intense out there. Uh, Breezy Cardiff put on a show for us and um, yeah, we just had a really good day. I think um, must have had a good sleep last night because we, I don't know, do we have five bullets? I think. Yeah. yeah it was unreal and then we uh, had a really nice nose dive which I think will be the photo <laughs> of the week. So uh, no, 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 no. I think we're going for photo of the year because not only did you nose dive in Extreme 40, you still managed to win the race. Yeah, yeah. I guess <laughs> I guess that's the first but uh, no, I chuffed with the second, um, you know, especially after the gold and at Salford Gold yeah. as well. So yeah, really happy. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, yeah, you're on fire, not only the nose dive uh, coming through to second here uh, uh, for the series, which is just fantastic, but also Weymouth. I mean, how does it feel when you're, you're building towards an Olympic campaign such as Rio? I mean, you, you got 30 starts away, I think, this regatta. Yeah. How, how does that work? I mean, um, you're building your skills all the time. Yeah, absolutely. I think just either way, as long as you're on the water all the time, you're yeah. just going to become a better sailor. And, you know, to be honest, I'm pretty tired. This is Nick Douglas, Adventures of a Sailor Girl in Weymouth. I didn't think I'd get here to see you guys, but it was a good day to come. A win in the ISAF World Cup here. How exciting. Yeah, obviously a good day for us. You know, the, the gold medal is what we wanted at the end of the day. And we worked pretty hard all week. The conditions were the two extremes, really. The, no wind in the, for the medal race and heaps of breeze for the out there in the uh, out there on the ocean, so um, yeah, it was, it was, we're really happy. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even imagine how you're feeling right now. It's been a big year. You had third in the World Championships, and then, and then now here at, at the venue of the last Olympics. Does it feel nice, I guess, going into to the next events? I mean, it's still close between you guys and Nina and, and Bundy, though. Yeah, I mean, we've got our World Championships, our next event, so it's really reassuring to post a good result here, and there's a lot of things that we need to work on still. So, no, it was a really good uh, event for us. We, we learn a lot, and we've got a bit of work to do, but uh, it's, it's, it's great to come home with the gold, and it's great to see Bundy and Nina up there pushing us, because... We're going to use them all the way to Rio, and they're going to use us, so we'll see what happens. Exactly. exactly. I think it's a pretty good position to be in. I, I think some people would say, oh, you know, it's a bad position to be in, but you guys, I've been a, a bit of a NACRA groupie for a while now, and it's nice to be here to, to see you guys on the water, but I think it's really a strength leading forward. Yeah, I mean, we, you see that in our, like our laser squads, the 49er squad, and, and obviously the 470s, and... And I think it's just an in, it's really important part of is not only progressing yourself to a gold medal, but as a as a professional sailor, and yeah. that's all we want to do in our in our life is be the best professional sailors we can be, whether it be that's you know, you know, sailing the NACRA here or sailing the NACRA and 
whoop whoop, doesn't matter. We just want to be the best that we can be at the end of the day. So we're just working towards that every day. Awesome. And the, uh, you're talking about being the best sailor you can be. I know you're doing a lot of other sailing on the side, heading to the extremes in Cardiff very soon. We're going on a road trip. Yeah, yeah. I've got to drive to, uh, <laughs> we've got to get on the ferry tonight and um, a bit of, uh, on the, get the boat on the way to Aarhus and then, yeah, I've got to fly back to Cardiff. And Lisa's going to come, so I'll take her for a sail on the X40. And, uh, yeah, we'll get the Red Bull guys. Hopefully we can get another win there. So we'll keep it uh, all gold medals on one continent. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. I've got a few people at home who wanted to give you some shout-outs. Uh, they were watching with bated breath. Kept everyone a little bit stressed during that medal race. <laughs> what do you reckon, Lise? Yeah, well, uh, well, we were very calm out there, so don't worry. <laughs> no, I think we aged Landy 20 years in uh, 20 minutes, so poor thing. But no, it was, yeah, it, thanks to everyone watching at home. I know we, lo we love getting all the messages when we get on the internet later. And it's, it's great to know that everyone at home is up, up late watching the tracker go round and round. So no, it's really good. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Refresh, refresh, refresh. Imagine the days when you, uh, <laughs> you know, the FYP. Imagine the days when you didn't have the tracker and the, and the TV, though. It's pretty, it's pretty good. I mean, maybe today that wasn't the best watching but it's still nice to to live vicariously i guess i don't know that would have been the best race i've ever seen in my life on the tracker like i reckon there would have been we would have been out of the medals for a minute then gold for a minute then so it would have been ridiculous so it was complicated i'm telling you i got a bit stressed myself watching but hey at the end of the day i've got this little uh beauty here guys uh how good's this yeah yeah you can you, you should be able to take this one home what do you reckon <laughs> oh we'll, we'll we'll give it back and we'll just get it back the next event that's the plan <laughs> that sounds good to me awesome thanks guys for catching up with me and uh and i'll see you soon Please. i forgot to ask you through the interview how quick is that sticker and the extra bubbles extra oh, extra bubbles that, that was just like yeah it was speed stripes speed stripes that <laughs> worked perfectly so we might have to uh get, get you to come to a few more events so. i think i'm now the official australian sailing team sticker on right yeah, I'm um, <laughs> never be good at a bad job, but yeah, if you want to come, yeah, you feel free. I'm loving it. <laughs>
Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, Lisa and I, we, we all share a common goal here. So we're, I've just got to be careful I don't overdo it a bit and um, yeah. I can keep my injuries on top of my injuries and stuff like that. Um, so we're on the water more than 300 days a year. Well, I am anyway. So, yeah. And Lisa's just as, as fit as a bloody ox at the moment. So um, she's just raring to go. So I, mean, I jumped off the plane here yesterday, of course, went for a surf straight away and then, um, <laughs> and then was back on the, and then back on the NACA the day, like that next morning and I'm about to leave to go sail the NACA again today and then tomorrow. So, um, yeah, so we've just got to, we're really pulling together and, um, we just want to make sure that we keep on top of our things and we'll be fine. So, yeah, yeah happy days. So, Oman, Oman is next with the Extreme Sailing Series and Red Bull Racing and no doubt there might be a little bit more pressure this time around. But uh, but then what's next for WD Sailing with the NACRA 17? What's coming up for you guys? Yeah, so we're, um, so yeah, straight to Oman and then I'll keep going to Europe and meet Lisa in Europe mm-hmm. and then we've got a big, a packed program straight to Parma then he has um, for our first Olympic selection together and then... Um, and then that year sort of just keeps going on with that sort of stuff. And then in between now, I'm jumping to China and then jumping to Wales and, and then jumping into Hamburg on the Extreme 40. Um, and then we've got to fit in a month in Rio de Janeiro to do some training. Um, uh, yeah, and then I think Lise, Lise and I run sort of different programs in terms of how we like to manage our years. And I, um, we'll see how we go. But I, I'm not going to come home until I think mid-October, maybe November next wow. year. So. Wow, amazing. Yeah, so... Well, maybe, yeah, it's good, yeah. maybe I'll have to catch up with you in Europe. But I'm just sitting here a little bit starry-eyed because I, I've, you know, I've known you for a little while. I coached with you when we were youngsters at Royal Prince Alfred Yacht Club. Did you think back then, I know you've always had that goal of getting a gold medal, but did you think back then that all of this stuff would, would start you know, falling into place as it is now? I mean, I know it just shows a culmination of a lot of years of hard work. But how does it feel mm. to you know, be able to access all these amazing parts of our sport right now? Oh, it's pretty funny, actually, Nick. Thinking back to those days, um, I was always telling everybody I want to be a pro sailor. Yeah. And then everyone was saying to me that that's only one in a million, Jace. It's only one in a million. And I remember just thinking, why can't I be that million, that one in a million? Yeah. Like, and so, and I knew they got to work hard for it, and that's what I've been doing. It's, it's what you see. You know, these results, they're great and all, but it's not, that isn't the work being done there. The work's being done at home behind closed doors. That's when I... You know, that's why I'm so excited after that finish and one of those photos, I look a bit, bit too excited. But it's just because all that hard work that you put into it, it's it's for that, you know, to pull off. It's it's relief more than, it's more than happiness. So, um, yeah, it's it's not nice. that stoked. Yeah, I've just got to get the ball rolling and, and get to the Olympic Games and win the gold medal. <laughs> yeah, well, everyone who knows you knows exactly that, that there's a lot of work behind those big smiles at the end of the Extreme Sailing Series. But I'm looking forward to seeing some big smiles on your face and also Lisa's face at the end of this coming season, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, all yeah, exactly. Lisa, Lisa's got a best smile, so we'll, we'll try to get a few more of that. <laughs> She's absolutely awesome, and it's very, very cool that you guys are stuck together for a team for so long. But thank you so much for catching up with me. Congratulations again, and good luck for the for the season coming ahead. I, I've no doubt that this is a really nice, uh, you know, momentum building stepping stone for you uh, as you're approaching your season in Europe. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Nick. No Appreciate worries it. at all. This is Nick Douglas, Adventures of a Sailor Girl, and on the line, a little bit weary as she drove home from Sail Melbourne overnight, Lisa Darminen, how are you going? I'm good, Nick. Um, it's a pretty long drive from Melbourne, but we uh, made it home safely last night at about midnight, so that's not too bad. <laughs> oh, that's really good to hear, but congratulations to you and your skipper on the NACRA 17, taking out your first World Cup event ever, a gold medal. Congrats. Thanks, yeah, it was really cool. I, I guess um, it kind of feels like the end of the year, but for us it's the start of the 2015 season, so yeah. it's nice to kick it off with the gold and, uh, you know, get the momentum going for next year. Definitely, and I'm just looking at your scorecard now. I know you haven't actually looked at the scorecard, so this might be a bit of fun for all of us. For races one through seven, nothing out of the top two with... Six wins and one second in race five. That's a pretty good record. Almost into yeah, day not... <laughs> three. Far out. Yeah, it was good. I think we kind of surprised ourselves on the first day with three bullets. And, um, yeah, we just strung a really good regatta together. And I think there were some really, really close finishes. And, mm. obviously, we came out on top in a lot of them. So, it's nice to learn that you can just keep pushing to the end and, um, you know, get those last last points on the line. And I mean, in, in a five-boat fleet, every point counts. But uh, I guess... Even even in a 40-boat fleet, it's really taught us that 
you know, fight every point to the end. <laughs> Definitely. And I mean, three top Aussie boats, I mean, from the gold medal through to the bronze is the is the Aussie NACRA squad. It must be amazing that you can have such tight racing between the three of you going forward as you're kicking off this 2015 season. Yeah, I mean, it's really important to have a strong squad behind whoever goes to the games. And I think... Um, I think the strength in the team is going to come out the next year. Like, we were quite a new squad this year with Lanny only coming in quite late mm. at the beginning of the year in March. So we've come a long way from March and we're going to work really hard over this summer so that come um, come the European season, we're going to be a little Aussie force to be reckoned with. I love <laughs> the it. Fans won't know what hit them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I haven't seen you guys since the Yachting Australia Awards. Uh, and as the official NACRA groupie, I'm just loving all of the action that's coming out of your squad. Uh, I mean, when, when we're looking at the, the quality that you have, yourself and Jason, you've been sailing together for quite some time. And then behind you in second and third, Darren Bundock and Nina Curtis, both Olympic medalists. Ewan McNichol and Lucinda Whitty, one an Olympic medalist coach, one an Olympic medalist. You guys must feel uh, pretty pretty chuffed to come out on top in that field. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty long, young in um, terms of Olympic racing and, and it's great to have the experience in those guys and we're learning so much from them. And we've got a silver medalist coach as well, Landy. So there's a lot yeah. of silvers and no, no one wants a silver in another year and a half. So <laughs> we're working pretty hard and... It's, it's, I mean, it's great. Like, everyone has different stories and coming out of different classes and stuff. So the whole Australian team is just working together. And um, I think that's the great thing about Aussies is, is we're a really close team and we share everything inside the group. So yeah. we're just all moving forward. And speaking about really the nice. Aussies, speaking about the other Aussies, Tom Burton took gold in the laser for the third year in a row. Joanna Sterling in the RSX class, a new up-and-coming uh, notable there. I mean, the whole squad performed brilliantly in Melbourne. I, I guess that is is great signs of, of what's ahead coming into this new season, as you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I think all the Aussies are doing well and having the young the young people coming through, obviously, Joe. I think she got silver in Melbourne. She won the medal race and got silver. Ash, Ash shot up in the laser. Like, we're all pretty young. We all, we all went to youth worlds in Brazil in 2009. Yeah. And, and, like, recent days, like, we went to youth worlds with he, them and Tom. So it's kind of cool having all... Uh, we've got, like, a little young posse going on now <laughs> and push, pushing the older guys, saying, come on, we're here, let, let's go. And, yeah, it's great. And... That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like pushing, 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 let's go. And everyone's learning at the same time because you guys have so much enthusiasm pushing forward. But I think just the passion within the Australian sailing team as a whole, not just with the sailors, but with the support crew is just massive. And it's so amazing to see you guys moving forward with so much momentum. Yeah, it's great. And I think it's it's, um, it's really interesting uh, coming into the team and and, and now I feel quite comfortable there and I'm pretty happy with the people around me and it's great to have so much support. All these, all the physios and the psychologists and the management all just trying to make our life easier. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It's great when you think all you have to do is go out there and go sailing. It must be really tough. <laughs> Yeah, it, it gets pretty tough out there. <laughs> I'm, 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 giving, I'm, I'm giving you a hard time, but I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing that you're able to go out there and do what you're good at, and that is to go out there and race and leave all of the management side of things and keeping your body in line. I mean, you do have to take some personal responsibility as well, but the, the level of support that you have is only going to make you guys faster in, in the year and a half or so ahead. Yeah, it's great. And um, it's funny... Um, I was talking to my mum the other day because I know we're trying to hang upside down and I can't do it. And she goes, how can you hang off the side of the boat in 30 knots but you won't hang upside <laughs> down in monkey bars? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how funny. Amazing what you can make your body do when, when a race is on the line, hey? A bit of adrenaline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me and congratulations to you and pass on my congrats to Jason as well, but also all of the other Australians. As you mentioned, Ash Stoddart had a great one and um, and Joe Sterling and Tom Burden and Matt Wern, I believe they had gold and silver in the laser. Great to see what's happening there. But there's only good things ahead for the Australian sailing team leading into Miami and then the year ahead. So can't wait to keep tabs on you guys. Yeah, it should be an interesting year. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. This is Nick Douglas, Adventures of a Sailor Girl, and on the line back in Australia from the Ice South Santander Worlds where you won a bronze medal, Jace. Jason Waterhouse, how are you going? 
Good, thanks, me. I'm a little jet lagged, but I'm happy to be home. <laughs> Yay, and congratulations to you and Lisa Dumminen on taking out the bronze medal in the NACRA 17 class. How does that feel? Amazing. Yeah, we're pretty um pretty chuffed. Um, the medal was a long term goal of ours um, this year, and we're really happy to achieve it. Well, about half a boat length away from a bronze, I uh, silver, which was. Um, you know, it's a bit of a shame we didn't get the silver, I've been saying that we're, we're still really happy to have a bronze medal. So, yeah, we're pretty stoked. I know. I have to say, I was watching on on the stream. I'm so happy that they streamed all of those uh, medal races. And I was holding my breath. But, yeah, like you say, amazing to come away with a podium fish, finish. That is just brilliant. Yeah, like it, was, um, it, was, it was half a boat length to silver and about a boat length lost to a fourth place. So... We're obviously happy to come away with a bronze medal that race because during a race course is so tricky. Um, <sighs> but yeah, but it was uh, it was uh, we're really really happy and and yeah, just the racing was really intense and the be um, you know the, all the Aussies, our Aussie teammates did pretty well as well. But to be the top Aussie was really nice to, as well. So yeah, um, yeah, looking forward from here, I guess. <laughs> what an amazing end to the season! Because the last time I caught up with you, you had so much happening with the GC thirty twos and the A classes. But then you've knuckled down. You've been focusing on the NACRA, and you headed to the Europeans and did exceptionally well there as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we um, did the Europeans and. Um, Place fifth, which qualified us from the AST, which was yeah. also another goal of ours. The goal was to qualify for the AST before the world, just to take a bit of the pressure off, which we did the Europeans and um, with the fifth place. And then came home, um, did some work with tracks, um, just got our bodies back into shape, um, just with a few injuries, and then went back to Santander fresh. And yeah, obviously it was sort of a good lead up, and um, we peaked at the right moment, I suppose. Yeah. The right word. And that's what it's all about in sailing. I mean, I spoke to Nina Curtis, who also sails in the NACRA 17 at the Europeans, and they didn't have the best event there, but you guys had your fifth and qualified for the Australian sailing team, which was awesome to see. And then a bit of downtime yeah. while the fleet, um, while some of the guys headed over to, to Rio, um, which hopefully yeah. you'll get to compete at next year, maybe, for the test event. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we unfortunately didn't qualify to go to the test event earlier this year. We weren't sailing our best at the beginning of the year, yeah. but... Um, yeah, hopefully we'll make it. We'll, we'll should go this year um, to go check out the event, which is exciting. But yeah. Um, yeah, during that time we came home and trained, and I had a pretty serious back injury, and oh. it actually worked out at, at the time that it, we, I probably wouldn't be able to go to Rio anyway at the point. But that's all under control now. And, we'll, um, and then yeah, went over there and just kicked ass. So that was good. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> awesome. Now you're very lucky because you have the Australian sailing team coach Andrew Landenberger who really knows his stuff but then as you mentioned you come home and you train with Trax who you've been working with most of your life Trax Gordon I did an interview with him actually up at Audi Hamilton Island Race Week which uh, he spoke about you guys in but I mean what, what's it like to come home and have his input as well into your program it seems like you've got the best of both worlds <laughs> yeah that's suppose that's a good thing we've got um, like obviously our, our support for the Australian Sailing team Often, only coaches and physios and a lot of support there. But we also have our, our sponsor, Objective, which yeah. gives us the support of Track Sun and the Future Champions Program. I suppose um, people ask me a lot, why do you have, why do you use Tracks and why do you use and like Landy? And I suppose they're, they're two very different coaches. Where we use Tracks and specialising in boat handling maneuvers and techniques, and we use Landy as more of a um, like um, technical, more. Um, observe it during racing and with your our equipment, which is also very important in Olympic sailing. So it's good to get both sort of ends of the spectrum with um, two great coaches. So we're really very, very lucky. Yeah, and I guess, you know, even in your downtime, you're not really in downtime. You're working towards something all the time, which is what it's like when you're an Olympian, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, it's fine. I think you start racing when you're on the course. It's so untrue. You're racing every day yeah. of the year. That what this four years, you know. So whether it be in the gym or at home organising logistics, um, you know, it's, it, you're racing full time. When you go to bed, you're racing. When you wake up, you're racing. There's um. There's no such thing as downtime, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I mean, when you love what you do, you, you, you're not really working either. So um, amazing, that you get, <laughs> yeah, amazing that you get to have those opportunities. But I can't wait to see what will happen at the start of, of next season. But, I mean, what a way to wrap it up. How does it feel to finish up that season with Lisa? I mean, do you guys look back and just go, whoa, we came a long way? 
Yeah, to be honest, like we had a when we finished sixth in the first World Championships this time last year, we were yeah. stoked, and then we had a few changes with just the way we sailed and the, our setup and whatnot, just to see if it work. And it really backfired on us. It, we had a few really bad events, and then lost a lot of confidence in our in our equipment. And um, I suppose we the men in Blick Regatta early in the year was a turning point where we said, you know, something's wrong here. We really need it do something um, yeah. to change the game a bit and uh, yeah we just did it which is really we're really happy so hopefully good things to come from here and um, and yeah a, lo- a long way to go still that's for sure Excellent but how, how long are you home for now? Do you get a bit of a, a you know a time with the family and whatnot? <laughs> <laughs> um, I flew home yesterday morning and I've been on the phone all day <laughs> yesterday and today trying to get to this Abu Dhabi World Cup Oh my final. goodness! Um, yeah, which is in November, so yeah. uh, that's next on the that's next for us anyway. Yeah. Um, in terms of the bigger guys, but we're still trying to oh, have to get there. Um, we've qualified, but just getting you know, there logistically is a bit hard with boats. And yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, we've got to go to Canberra and go to AIS and do some testing there and. A few little local regattas and maybe a surf trip if I'm lucky. So. Yay. Well, it sounds like it's all go, uh, but still lots of fun. And, I mean, I think it's going to be a cracker of a summer as well down here. So um, welcome home and congratulations. And I can't wait to catch up with you in person very soon. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, it'll be good. I heard you got that lot of rain this August, so I'm <laughs> happy I missed that. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy you missed it too. Oh, and I can't wait to have a NACRA sale now that you're back. NACRA Groofy, officially. <laughs> Absolutely, we've got plenty of them lying around at the moment, so you're more than welcome to come down for sale. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe maybe we use one of the older ones because you know how you spoke about a few a few gear weaknesses. I'm sure I can test test them out. <laughs> yeah, we'll check the durability of our ten thousand dollar carbon mask. We'll do that. <laughs> and I might wear some body armor or something as well. <laughs> I don't need to check my gear. Yeah, one maybe helmet. A helmet, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> helmet, full body armor, will be fine. Excellent. Well, great to catch up with you, Jason. We'll t- chat to you soon. Good, thanks, thanks. This is Nick Douglas, Adventures of a Sailor Girl, and I've managed to wake Jason Waterhouse up on the morning that he's kicking off a regatta. Jace, how are you going? I'm well, thanks. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Sorry to wake you up. That's cool. No, I'm ready to go. So um, the regatta starts today, so I had to get up this time anyway and get the body clock going. Awesome, awesome. Well, so long as I haven't whacked you too much out of your schedule, because you've had a really good run. Congrats on your, your second at the A-Class Worlds. You're a genius. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks. It was a really cool event. So I'm really, um, it was really exciting and um, to get the result at the end. Um, obviously, the first wasn't there, but the second was still just as good, I reckon. So I was pretty happy with that. Yeah, just brilliant. I caught up with you halfway through the, the regatta but unfortunately that interview didn't work but I'm just so impressed with how you were able to um, to pull that out of your hat somehow I've started calling you the chameleon because you just jumped on the A class that was the first time that you'd actually raced it so I think seconds buddy brilliant yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it was my first event in the A class um, I've been wanting to get on one for a while and then once I saw a start of fo- the foiling capabilities of it I um Really, uh, really pushed myself to try to get aboard, and I was really lucky the Exploder guys invited me to um, come to a training camp in Poland just to do about four or five days on the water before I head off to France and did the Europeans. And those days were um, they were just um, priceless in terms of how good, uh, how much I got out of the boat in those days, and to be able to go to that event with a little bit of a little bit of experience um, in terms of boat handling and then use my already. I suppose racing skills was really good. So, yeah, I was really happy to pull away the second. And, and nice. I'm really hoping to keep that rolling in our maybe first place at the Worlds next year. So we'll keep, yeah. that, keep that on the on the goal list anyway. Who knows what you'll be able to bring? Because in the past few weeks I've caught up with you, I mean, you're campaigning the NACRA. You've jumped on the A-Class. You did the GC32s. I mean, clearly you're, you're all over the cats. But... Um, but, but yeah. you, you're just jumping in and out of all of this stuff. You, you must be gaining so much experience jumping across the classes. Yeah, it keeps things fresh too. Like I, I, find, I really do find that the more boats you sail, the, every every boat race is different and you can always change, um, bring that to the other classes as well. And the experience is just unreal from each one of those things. I've learned so much in terms of, you know, the NACRA has the really good wonders on racing. The A-class has the really good um, uh development in terms of the foils and how you sail the boat around the fleet and then the GC32 is just 
out of control close quarters <laughs> racing and that's really boat on boat so yeah you really do get a taste of each little bit and put it together so it's yeah it's I'm really excited to start this event and see what I got out of the last one. <laughs> oh, awesome. And and you'll be working with your coach, Andrew Ledenberger, who you were actually racing against at the A-Class Worlds. How was that? A little bit of a change of roles. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Landy, um, he placed fourth in the last Worlds. I oh, think really? won the last European, so maybe the Europeans before that. So I had a really good mentor, and um, he's the one who really got me into the A-Class. And um. And, yeah, it was cool racing him. You know, we worked together as a team. We're sound in the same boats, same manufacturer, Exploder. And, um, and yeah, we're both using the same sails. Obviously, he's landed burger sails. So we really t- communicated a lot, not just on the racing, but the boats. And um, the racing was good fun, and I really enjoyed it. So um, but he's here now trying to coach me now <laughs> to uh, win this event. So it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a nice relationship, though, when you can have that training partner capability, but then also have him step back into that coaching role. Because part of being a coach is also knowing the, the people that you're coaching. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure that that will take your, your relationship to another level. Yeah, absolutely. He's, um, we've only been working together since uh, Melbourne, which was in December. So yeah, we're, we're, still, we're still a pretty fresh group of um, team in terms of how long we've been together. So it was really cool to do an event together and go away and just spend some time, quality time together, I could say, Nick. <laughs> quality time. Oh, quality sounds, like, time. sounds like a bit of bonding going on. That's really nice it, to hear. It was. <laughs> but now WD Sailing is back on the water and it sounds like you've been putting together a new boat. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I've got Leaf back, which yeah. is good because it was complete mayhem in terms of organisation <laughs> over here. <laughs> I did see a few photos that she posted on Facebook. Apparently, you're not very good at coiling ropes. No, no. I just So, to get to France, I had to chuck it all in and just drive here. And she, and she just rocked up. She's like, what have you done? <laughs> but no, I've got the new boat, which is really cool. We're putting it, we put it together this week and is um, to be honest, it's a bit of a late, a late put together. I've been pretty ill, so I've been done. Um, yeah. It's been pretty tricky uh, putting it together. So, um, Elisa's done a great job for me, and she's um, really, the boats are good. I think we've sailed twice now before, and the yeah. event starts today. So, we'll, we'll just take it as it comes. And the goal is Santander, but this event I'd like to do well as well. So, we'll see how that goes. Of course, you always want to do as well as you can. But yeah, Lisa's a bit of a superwoman flying back in and, and coming to the rescue. <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome to hear. So, um, what's the weather looking like? Looks pretty fresh this week. I think I saw 26 knots nearly every day. So um, I'm glad I've been spending a lot of time on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of time on the boat. I hope Lisa's yeah, been looking that's... after her forearms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Got to look after the crew, especially if it's going to be windy. But um, yeah, it looks windy and it looks shifty So all week. So pretty excited. Sounds a bit like pit water. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll be just like home. Well, that's fantastic to hear. And, and good luck to you guys. And good luck to the whole squad because it looks like you, you did jump out on the water to have a few sessions with the squad this week. Yeah, it was cool. We all lined up and it's good to see everybody. And uh, yeah, everyone looks pretty quick as well. So it's really exciting. It should be good. So the fleets will split up today and then, um, and then we'll go our separate ways and then we'll see each other all in the finals, hopefully. Excellent. So how does, how does the format work for this event? Um, so there's yeah, there's quite a lot of us. I think we've got seventy five members. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot. And then we'll split into two groups, and then do um, eventually we'll make our way to a gold and silver fleet, and then and then do a final series from Thursday to Saturday. I think so, wow. and then a medal race. So we're, that's that'll be cool. That will be very, very cool. Well, congratulations again on your A-class win, uh, Mr. Chameleon. <laughs> and um, all the no worries, and all the best to WD Sailing for the week ahead, but also the, the rest of your squad as well. Um, uh, I hope everything goes brilliantly for everybody out there on the racetrack. I'm sure it will. It'll be very exciting. Thanks, Nick. No worries at all. Hopefully, I'll catch up with you soon. This is Nick Douglas just catching up with our chameleon, Jace Waterhouse, over in Europe. He's about to kick off a NACA event today, and I managed to get him out of it. This is Nick Douglas, Adventures of a Sailor Girl, and while she's here in the country, we've got Lisa Jamminen on the line. Lisa, how are you going? <laughs> I'm pretty good. It's good to be home. Sydney's been to, um, delivering some pretty good weather. so Pretty good yeah. weather. <laughs> Today, at least, it was sunny, but I mean, over the weekend, we had just a little bit of rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you got to have that so you appreciate the days like this, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, you're back uh, fresh from doing the NACRA tour over in Europe. How is everything going? Yeah, it's going really well. We had a really good end to our first little 
tour this season. Um, we did four four regattas, two World Cups, and two Eurosafs, and we just got uh, just kind of ticking boxes and improving every regatta, which is really good because um, we f- finished on a high going back to the Europeans in a few weeks, and then we've still got a few months into the world to perfect things. Yeah, it's just it's just awesome to see how well the the NACRA fleet is going at the moment because there's almost a, a squad of you guys. And I spoke to Jace last week on the show. And it just sounds fantastic how you're able to collaborate together. Yeah, we've got um, a new coach, Andrew Landenberg, has joined the team, which is really exciting. He's a ACAT champion and a sailmaker, so we've got lots of knowledge there. And we've got a really strong squad with uh, Darren Bondas and Anita Curtis and um, Ewan McNichol and Lucy DeWitty. So we're working all really closely together. We also have... Um, the Victorian James is back in Pipitra Monaco. So that little squad works really well together and Landy Landy brings out the best of everybody, which is really cool. Oh, that's awesome to hear. And then you can be moving and progressing all the way through. But but back here in Australia I heard that it wasn't long before you were you were back out there on the water helping out with the Objective Future Champions program. Yeah, well Jason and I grew up um through um, the Objective Future Champions program with Chax as our coach and Tony Walls as a really strong supporter of us. And um, so whatever we can give back to them, I'm, I'd be ha- like, I'm happy to. The whole point of the program is to have the younger um, kids in touch with people that are living their living their dream basically, and realise that it's not that far away that they can be on an Olympic boat doing the circuit. So it was really cool when Chax asked me to go up and. And go watch them sail and have a chat to them. Um, they're, they're pretty keen training at 6.30 in the morning. So yeah. It was a bit, <laughs> bit of an early morning, but it was really cool to have a chat to them and um, tell them about what I'm doing and also hear what what they want to learn and just give whatever ever help I can to them, basically. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, I um, you're, you're talking specifically about the 29er team, uh, the, the girls' team. I actually met them yesterday when I was up at Wanji for the winter regatta. There was a fleet of almost 20 29ers, I think. It was great to see. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and, um, and, and they spoke very, very highly of you. So, um, their oh, eyes, that's good. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> their eyes lit up when I mentioned, you know, we had no connection at all. I'm just randomly introducing myself. No connection at all until I mentioned your name, and then we were best friends. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, well, I was just basically t- um, we just chat there going over to the Worlds in Canada in July. So I was just talking about my first Youth Worlds experience and how I managed school and sailing all the way through. And it was it's kind of really cool to relive that a little bit and see how far I've come as well and, and see just to remind myself how I felt before my first international matter and how do an international matter every week. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. It's amazing how you can change and how the pressure changes as well because, you know, doing your first one, it feels like it's the biggest thing in the world. But then, as you say, it, it, it sort of becomes second nature now. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome to see. Now, it's great as well to see that there's some, some strong all-female crews coming through in the 29er. Yeah, well, I guess with the NACA mixed class, I've got really empowered about girls beating the boys in sailing because yeah. I guess it's one of the only, it is the only Olympic class where the girls and boys take each other on. So yeah. I think that's a really cool part of the NACRA and it's really, it's, um, it's really challenging as well, especially for the girl crews trying to match the boy crew. So, so when we get those spinnakers up almost as fast as them, it's a little win as well. Oh, it's, it's, so amazing. it's great to see the, yeah, it's great to see the girls coming through because, I mean, it's, I think it's quite a t- tough, Pass for the girls in terms of where sailing can take us compared mm. to say a lot of the males. That's why with the um, with the Volvo Ocean Race having all girls team and seeing tracks just put a lot of effort into the girls. It makes it makes me really happy and it's really cool. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It's funny that you're, you're mentioning all of those. I mean, I sp- I've spoken to Nina quite a little bit. She's a regular on the show and about how she's working on her strength because some of the other NACRA teams have a boy crew with a girl skipper, which seems to make sense given the strength, but you guys are really matching it. And then I've also touched base with Stacey Jackson and uh, on Team SCA. And, the, I mean, it's just females are really starting to find their place in the sport, which is awesome to see. Yeah, it's re- it's it's great, and it's really good development. And, I mean, with the NACRA, it's, it's challenging, but... It's not. It's not impossible, and a lot of people thought that it, the girls weren't going to be able to do it. So the fact that there's just such a mix throughout the whole fleet, it's it's really good to see. That is awesome to see, and no doubt that you will be able to do it. I I 
I'm uh, maybe I'm a bit. I'm becoming a bit of a NACRA groupie, having spoken to yourself and Nina and Jace. I'll have to get the others on just so I can make sure I'm spoken. Yeah, to Yeah, you have to. You have to come out um, when we're back in Sydney and see what these boats are all about because yes. I think they're they're pretty awesome. That would be amazing. Mic me up. That would be very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll have to plan on doing that. That would be great. But how is your time back in Sydney? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's really good. I mean, um, it's it's uh, a little bit difficult seeing Jason boiling around in all sorts of boats in here, but <laughs> it's been really good just to relax a little bit and w- work on my fitness and just focus on that, so that when we go reconvene at the end of um, the end of the month, I'm feeling good going back on the boat. And Jason's had a good time, and we're fresh for the Europeans. Oh, for sure. There. <laughs> Nothing better than a strong crew and a happy skipper. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, people may not know, for those um, who, who haven't met you and Jason personally, that you guys are cousins, and you've actually been sailing together for quite a long time. Yeah, we've um, we've obviously known each other forever. We're in, I'm actually the older one, so oh, the older well, mature one that keeps us intact. But <laughs> no, we've been sailing together since 2007, so um, on the Hobie 16, and I still remember the day that I got the call saying, oh, do you want to... Jump sail with me and maybe go to the youth world. I thought, oh yeah, why not? And look, look, uh, look where we are now. So yeah. it's, it's pretty cool. You've it's pretty cool to do it with someone in your family. And yeah, I yeah, think, keeping I think it close. It, it makes uh, the, the the sweet times sweeter, and the hard times are a little bit hard. But you always have to forgive them at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to love them, their family. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, that's great to see, and it's awesome to see that you've, you've, you're doing it at, a, at an Olympic level as well. I think that's something very rare to be able to to do family sport at an Olympic level. Yeah, it also makes it easier in the mixed classes. The, the boyfriend and the girlfriend at home are pretty happy that we're sailing with each other. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I never thought about that, and 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 that's it. you're also not partners sailing together, which can be entirely a different ball game. So. Yeah, yeah, keeps it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, we're all about variety. But um, you know, I, I've I've found that sailing with my um, I, I've sailed with my dad for a number of years on the Taser, and I sailed with him this weekend. And even when we we didn't sail our best this weekend, but even at the end of the day, you're still spending time with someone that you you care about spending that time with as well. So it's um, it it, it makes it all good, and you seem to be on the same page. And our communication as well is at another level because we seem to think in a similar way. I'm not sure if you have that experience with Jason at all. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. The, and even the more time we spend each other, we just keep saying the same things at the same time. It's a little <laughs> bit crazy. <laughs> I know, it's funny when you, you sort of think about, are we are we a product of how we're brought up or is it all biological? It makes me wonder, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. Yeah, it works for us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and that's what's important is finding what works for you. But it's great to hear that you've had a good time while you've been at home and we'll definitely be following your progress, that's for sure. Okay, sounds good. Excellent. Well, thanks for chatting to me. <laughs> no worries at all. Thank you so much. That was Lisa Dumin, and she's been sailing the NACRA and also helping out around the place with the Objective Future Champions program while she's been in Australia. Great to have her on the show. This is Nick Douglas, Adventures of a Sailor Girl, and we'll be right back with you after this break. This is Nick Douglas, Adventures of a Sailor Girl, and all the way from Austria, we have Mr. Jason Waterhouse on the line. Jace, how are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you, Nix? I am very, very well. Now, I've, I've stayed up quite late just to get a chance to talk to you because you've got some exceptionally exciting stuff going on, don't you? Yeah, it's um, over here in Austria. We've got the um, the first event, the GC32 um, foiling catamarans at the moment. So uh, it's really exciting. Everyone's learning the boats, and these things are um, pretty out of control, so really enjoying the sailing. I can't believe it. You seem to just be in all of the happening spots recently. I mean, I'm, I've <laughs> spent a lot of time talking to you last year during the Youth Americas Cup, and you're also campaigning in NACRA towards Rio. And now here you are at the GC32s. Jace, far out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose, um, obviously, after the Americas Cup, foiling has become very high profile, and particularly in catamarans. So I'm just exploring that sort of side of the sailing at the moment. Um, both with this GC32 and the A-Class and just getting a bit used to it and enjoying it, the sailing a lot. You know, it's a new concept, the foiling and um, the boat speed aspect is incredible. So, um, but yeah, just doing that alongside my Olympic campaign keeps me pretty busy. (laughs) I I don't doubt that at all, but you are somebody who is very, um, how how do we say, organised and determined. So I don't doubt that both campaigns will be done uh, 
brilliantly. Um, so, <laughs> how was how was the racing today? You're just fresh off the water, and that's why we're up so late. But um. yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, the racing here is great. We've got um, a lot of the Oracle guys here, um, the two Aussies, um, Slingsby and Kyle, and also the Luna Rossler um, teams here as well. And today we had a really good day. Actually, our best day so far. We had two races this morning and uh, two bullets um, out of oh. those two races. So, yeah, pretty chuffed. So it was a good day to, uh, um, considering we're, we're a brand new team, we've never met each other before. And uh, um, Seb Cole, our skipper from France, he's he's really great sailor and, um, yeah, really happy with today's sailing. So looking forward to tomorrow. <laughs> oh, that is so great to hear. Congratulations. I didn't know what your results were. They're probably not even on the web yet. <laughs> <have to> yeah. <laughs> there you go. You've been into them. <laughs> Excellent. I'll, I'll just, I'll, you know, I'll blast that out over social media at 2 a.m. in the morning. Everyone will know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a shame that um, the breeze just died this afternoon. We didn't get any more racing in because we're obviously on a roll. But, um, you know, plenty more to come tomorrow, I guess. Excellent. I'm sure you can carry that momentum through. Now, what is the team that you were sailing with, Jace, and how did that come about? Yeah, so it wasn't um, obviously doing my Olympic stuff. I'm just focusing on that at the moment. I had a, a week um, off in between um, separate events, and I just got a call to say, hey, you want to come foiling these um, these cats? And obviously I jumped at the opportunity, and um, I was, we're sailing with Seb, Sebastian Cole. He's, he st- um, skippered the French America's Cup team yeah. in 07. Great um, Matt Tracer and Sailor, and, and also we've got um, a fresh fella um, on the bow, a Kiwi, um, which is quite funny, um, Nick, Nick Blackman, and also oh, one I, of the... I know object- Blackman, yeah. Okay. You know Blackman, yeah, he's a good bloke. <laughs> yeah, he is. And, um, and James Wazdowski, one of the Objective Australia boys, is on the boat as well, and we sort of just came together, and we knew that we weren't going to be, obviously, as um, Schmick is the... Uh, the America's Cup teams who are here who have had plenty of time on the boat, but we just have, wanted to have a go and get get some experience and enjoy the racing, which we are. And and maybe a little bit more hungry, though. Maybe not as experienced, but, but definitely keen to get out there and give it a go. What an awesome opportunity. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> we, um, we had a go on, well, we had uh, the test trials for the boat um, in Le Grand Mott, and we drove down there and did the trials with the new foils, and we kind of hooked instantly, so we've been jumping at the chance to get back on it. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. And so you're at Austria for the next few days, and are you going to do another GC32 event? Does it fit with the NACRA, the next one? Mm, it's pretty busy schedule. Um, and my ultimate goal, both Lisa and I, we really want to do um, it, uh, really well. Our peak performance is at Santander, the ISAF Youth, sorry, the ISAF World Championships um, in Santander. So pretty all systems go. But I'm off to um, Poland to do some A-class sailing on the Exploder, um, the oh. foiling catamaran. And then the uh, the Europeans and France is on, on those, and then back straight onto the Olympic circuit. So no rest for the wicked here, unfortunately. Yeah. But really, man, it's a life of a sailor, and I'm loving it. So I yes. can't complain at all. And and all the and and cats and cats and cats, which is what you love. You grew up sailing cats, so I mean, it, you must feel exceptionally lucky that it seems to be the fashion at the moment to have, you know, to be sailing cats. Yeah, I suppose that goes back to my folks, you know. Um, both really good cat sailors and putting me straight into the cat when I was really, really young. So um, you're kind of hooked. Like, why would you, if you're going to go somewhere, why wouldn't you go fast? So that's why I sail cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Now, that's really cool. Now, um, the, the NACRA, what, what's up next for that? I think you've just finished up at Maidenblick, if my memory mm-hmm, serves yeah. me correctly. Yes. Yeah, Maidenblick was our um, the sort of first, the end of our first sort of tour over in Europe. Um, Lisa's gone back home to recover and um, just get uh, her physical aspect as a crew um, on track and I'm staying over in Europe just to gather gather some more um, fleet racing experience. Mm -hmm. Um, But the next event for us is the Europeans in early July in uh, Le Grand Mont in France and looking to semi-peak there because that's the last event before the Santander World. So yeah, yeah, exactly. But we have a really great um, new coach now, Andrew Landenberger, he's a squad coach and he's just bringing a whole new level to... Yeah, the Aussie from Grafton, the old farmer. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, saying against people like Bundy and Darren um, and Ewan and Lucinda and James and Pip, we have a really strong, tight squad and we're developing our skills really quickly. So um, I'm sure there's good things to come out of that. Oh, no doubt at all. I've, I've touched base with Nina quite a few times after each regatta. She's a regular on the show. And it's fantastic to hear how the NACRA squad is mm-hmm. going. There's an immense amount of talent available to you all. It must be fantastic. Yeah, it is. You know, the only guy we're really missing is Glenn Ashby at the moment. And obviously, he's quite busy with his America, um, America's Cup stuff. But 
Um, we're really working well together and the boats themselves as a new class, there's so much to learn about them. And, you know, it was a bit of a shock, you know, we all rocked up the Palmer and um, a lot of things have changed. The Europeans have been working hard over the winter and we just adjusted to that and slowly now it's just um, really capitalising on what we're learning these last few months. Yeah, it must be must be amazing. Now, the question that I think everybody is probably going to be asking now that uh, you're on the NACRA, you've done the Youth America's Cup, you're now on the GC32s. Have you had a call up yet to do something with Team Australia as yet? <laughs> um, not quite. I suppose right right now I'm really just focusing on my Olympic Games. Um, that's the ultimate goal at the end of the day yeah. um, for myself. And it has been since I was, you know, um, 10 years old and watching you know, the gold medalists coming in out of Australia. Um, but, you know, at, in saying that as well, the opportunity, if it jumped at, at me, it definitely would be on it. But um, until I get a, a serious a, approach, I suppose, from a team, then I'm just going to keep sailing as fast as I can and, and do the best I can in all my aspects of sailing. So at the moment, not, nothing happening really there. And I'm uh, just really enjoying my sailing at the moment. Awesome. Awesome to hear. Sorry, I had to ask the question because I know that, I know that it, uh, it, it seems like the logical step for you, given that the... The cats are, uh, uh, are the thing at the moment, shall we say. But, yeah. but all credit to you. I think it's, uh, you're definitely somebody who likes to tick their boxes and, um, and, and good luck to you with, with your Olympic campaign and ticking that box because who knows what's in, in front of you uh, given all yeah. the opportunities. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, it's great to be here and, and to see, you know, the America's Cup progression into the cats and the foiling. And I think it's really exciting for the sport and for you, sailors, for myself, you know, the the um, really the athletic um, athleticism that's needed on these boats is really crucial now. And I think it's um, it's sort of a, a pathway for now um, you sailors to be able to get into the America's Cup at a young age. Um, I think it's really exciting. And a lot of guys here, I'm um, chatting with, um, the other teams, it, it, lots of young guys on the boats working really hard and having a big role in the cup, um, their cup campaign. So I wouldn't be surprised if the t Team Australia went that way as well. Yeah, awesome. It seems, it seems natural and, and the passion and the drive that often youth sailors have, is, it, it just adds another element, I think. Yeah, and I suppose, you know, it's um, a pretty high-quality pool of Australians in, say, in Australia, so um, they've got plenty of um, talent to choose from, um, the, the, that Australian syndicate, and I'm sure, you know, whoever they do pick for whatever roles, they'll be a great team, and I'm really looking forward to supporting them the whole way, either way, whether I'm on, that, on the syndicate or not, so wishing them the best of luck, that's for sure. Oh, that's amazing. We all are wishing them luck, but I'm wishing you luck and Lisa as well. I hope everything goes well for your campaign going forward. Hopefully we'll touch base with you soon, but well done so far at the G32s. I'm, I'm going to have to get up at this time tomorrow just to check how your results are going. Yeah, yeah hopefully we get a bit more. I heard there's some more sunshine coming, which is exciting, and hopefully a bit more breeze. We can pop up onto the foils, but, yeah, it should be good fun to race tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Oh, so fantastic. Thank you so much, Jace, for touching base with us. That was Jason Waterhouse from Austria at the GC32 event. This is Nick Douglas, Adventures of a Sailor Girl for Sunset Radio. Nick Douglas, Adventures of a Sailor Girl here. We're in the America's Cup Media Centre. And look who I've run into. It's Mr. Jason Waterhouse. Give room Objective Australia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great to be here. <laughs> oh, it's great to be here too. Isn't it awesome? It's a lovely day. It's a gorgeous day. And you were out training this morning? Yeah, we were really lucky. We had a really nice um, solid breeze, about 15 knots this morning out in the 45s. And uh, we got plenty done. And the boys are pretty tired. <laughs> I bet they are. You're yeah. really lucky. I'm really lucky. I finally got to see them on the water. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's awesome having 10 boats all out there at one oh, time. You know. So are you doing practice races? or what? It looks like you're going around marks and things. Yeah, so we have a few marks in there. We're just trying to nail down the boat handling at the moment. Yeah. Um, we've got about eight more sessions left till kick off. <laughs> we just have much time for uh, practice starts, practice races. Um, yeah. Just trying to tick the boxes before game day. Indeed, indeed. So um, it's probably about two weeks to go. You start on the 1st of September. What, I mean, you're, you're running around like a mad person. Can you give us an idea of what your daily schedule is looking like? at the moment. Yeah, so every morning we're up at six, um, you know, eating lots, lots, as much as we can just to get the calorie count up, and yeah. then we're on the water by um, 7.38, um, about a two or three hour session uh, before the breeze gets too fresh and we don't damage the boats too much, yeah. and then uh, off the water, a bit of recovery, then straight to the gym for most of the boys, 
and home dinner, sleep at nine. Like it's full on day. Full on intense. Yeah. You know, if people didn't think that sailors are professional athletes, I guess you're definitely proving them wrong. For sure. I mean, uh, it's better, 100% it's better than being in the office, but uh, yeah. they're long days and we're just trying to get the most as we can Indeed. out of the next days. Indeed. And the actual event goes for four days, mm -hmm. I believe. And um, looking, like, looking at the breeze here, I mean, it's, it's up. So I think you're down for 11 till 2 most days and it's, it's almost up by 2 every day. Do you think you'll get a full program in? Absolutely. I mean, um, this is going to be a show and yep. that's all here to do to perform. You know, we've got, um, you know, high sponsors, you know, high risk, uh, yep. high intensity boats. <laughs> so we're going to go out there and we're going to put on a show and, you know, the goal is to perform and the, the weather will play ball. It's pretty oh. uh, consistent pattern. See, I've never been anywhere in the world with the same direction every day. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable, isn't yeah. it? It's like they could almost make those markers permanent. Yeah, they may as well just, <laughs> just drop in and leave them overnight. <laughs> just leave a little a little um, substitute boy there and they can click the big ones on in the morning. Now, um, you've also been in Europe and you've been going really well on the NACRA. Um, how does it compare doing an Olympic campaign to, to this sort of program? I'd say this is almost even more intense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is... Um, you know, professional sailing 101s, both mm -hmm. this and the Olympic pathway. Um, in terms of this event, the biggest hurdle for me is, you know, six boys on the boat and yeah. trying to, you know, lead and manage those guys, uh, yeah. who are all individual great sailors themselves, is quite tricky, but we're coming together really well. And in terms of, you know, the Olympic style, there's nothing that can compare to an AC45 going around the course. Um, I don't think I'll ever be as fortunate as our one with a bunch of great guys. I yeah. saw them on the mooring and I thought I was really lucky. I know, you should try parking one of those things. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Oh, it's amazing. It's, they're, they're so amazing. And, and I mean, this will be finishing up um, sort of early September. Oh, what's going to happen? I mean, your life will go back to how it was. I know. <laughs> it's, really, it's always hard going home, um, especially in February as well, was going hard. Yeah back to the NACA 17, but that's a great boat as well, yeah. and I'm really lucky with sailing with Lisa and my crew on that, and um, I both enjoy sailing them just as much, but you, not, you can sail a NACA any day, really, and sailing one of these, you get once in a lifetime. And it's all sailing, it's amazing. Um, we're so lucky to be out. We're just looking out of the media centre here, and it's, the sun is shining, and the wind's starting to drop off, and it's just a beautiful sport that we're, we're able to be involved in, that's for sure. Absolutely, and San Francisco's a great host, and, and great people, and um, you know, really looking forward to the next few weeks. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So great to catch up with you. I'll let you run off and do those 50 million things that you've got to do, <laughs> and all the best from the Sailing Chicks, and all the best from Australia, because we're all behind you, and um, I can't wait to follow what will be happening. And I'll be back at home then, which will be sad, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, we'll try being home the silverware. So exactly, exactly, awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Chase.